murder in the first degree, premeditated homicide is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You've heard a long and complex case, and it is now your duty to sit down to try to separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead. The life of another is at stake. If there is a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then he must be found guilty. Whichever way you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. You are faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you. You know something? It's hot. You think they at least air conditioned the place? I almost dropped dead in court. All right, everyone's here. If there's anything you need, I'm right outside. Just knock. I didn't know they locked the doors. Well, sure they locked the doors. What did you think? I don't know. I just didn't think about it. Six days. Should have only taken two. Talk, talk, talk. Did you ever hear so much talk about nothing? Well, I guess they're entitled. Everybody gets a fair trial. That's the system. I guess you can't say anything again. How'd you like that business? Did you ever hear a phonier story? Well, uh, you've got to expect that. You know what you're dealing with. Yeah, I suppose. <clears throat> What's the matter? You got cold? Oh, a Lulu. These hot weather colds can kill you. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's take our seats. Right. This better be fast. I've got tickets to Hades Town tonight, and I must be the only person in the whole world who hasn't seen it yet. Okay, Your Honor. Start the show. How about sitting down? The gentleman at the window, how about sitting down? Oh, sorry. It's tough to figure, isn't it? A kid kills his father. Big! Just like that. Well, <coughs> it's the element. They let these kids run wild. <laughs> Maybe it serves them right. <laughs> Is everyone here? Yeah, only in the bathroom. We'd like to get started. Oh, oh, forgive me, I didn't mean to keep everybody. That's all right, we'll find a seat. Okay, now you folks can do this any way you want to. I mean, I'm not going to make any rules or anything. We can talk about it first and then vote, that's one way. Or we can vote now just to see where we stand. Let's vote now. Who knows? Maybe we can all go home. Yeah, let's see who's where. Right, let's vote. Okay, everyone doesn't want to vote. All those voting guilty, raise your hand. Nine, ten, eleven. All those voting not guilty. One. Right. Okay. 11 to 1. Now we know where we are. Somebody's out in left field. <laughs> you actually think he's not guilty? I don't know. You sat in court and listened to the same things I did. He's a murderer. You can see it. He's 19 years old. That's old enough. Stabbed his father four inches to the chest. They proved it a dozen different ways. Want me to list them? No. Well, do you believe his story? I don't know whether or not I believe it. Maybe I don't. So what did you vote not guilty for? There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not so easy for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Well, who says it's easy for me? No one. What, just because I voted fast? I think the guy's guilty, and you couldn't change my mind if you talked for 100 years. I don't want to change your mind. I just want to talk for a while. Look, this kid's been kicked around his whole life. I mean, living in the slums, his mother dead since he was nine? That's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. You know why slum kids get that way? Because we knock them over the head once a day, every day. I just think we owe him a few words. That's all. 
Well, I don't mind telling you this, but we don't owe him a thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? Do you know what that trial costs? He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown-ups here. You're not going to tell us that we're supposed to believe him knowing what he is. I mean, I've lived among them my entire life, and trust me, you can't believe a word they say. You know that. I don't know that. Well, what a terrible thing for a person to believe. Since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? You have no monopoly on the truth. It's not Sunday. We don't need a sermon. When people say things like this, it's very dangerous. See no need for arguing like this. I think we ought to be able to behave like civilized human beings. Right. We're going to discuss this case. Let's discuss the facts. That's a very good point. We've got a job to do. Let's do it. If, if you don't mind, then I'm going to close the window. It was blowing on my neck. I may have an idea here. I'm just thinking out loud now, but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince this juror that we're right and he's wrong. Maybe if we each took a minute or two, you know, just sort of try that on for size. That sounds fair. Supposing we go once around the table in jury order? Okay, let's start it off. All right. Looks like you're first. Oh, uh, well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. I mean, nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. The burden of proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open their mouth. That's in the Constitution. The Fifth Amendment, you've heard of it. Well, sure, I've heard of it. I know what it is. I, what I meant, well, anyway, I think he was guilty. Let's look at the facts. First, let's take a look at the, the old man who lived on the second floor, just below the apartment where the murder took place. On the night of the murder, at 10 minutes after 12, he heard a loud noise upstairs when he thought sounded like a fight. Then he heard the kid yell, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard a body fall. So he went to his door, saw the kid running down the stairs out of the building. He called the police. They found the father dead, stabbed. What more do you need? The coroner put the time of death at around midnight. Boy's entire story is flimsy. He claims he was at the movies. That's a little ridiculous, isn't it? He doesn't even remember what pictures he saw. Right. She's absolutely right. Yeah. And what about the woman across the street? If her testimony doesn't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She saw the killing, didn't she? Uh, let's go in order. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's a woman who's lying in bed and can't sleep. It's hot, you know? Anyway, she looks out the window, and right across the street, she sees the kid stick the knife into his father. Now, she's known the kid all his life. His window was right opposite hers, across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it through the windows of a passing elevated train. Okay, and they proved in court that you can look through the windows of a passing L train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. Let me ask you something. How come you believed her? She's one of them too, isn't she? You're pretty smart, aren't you? Now hold it. Hey, hey, hey. What do you get all upset about? Let's all calm down now. Number five, it's your turn. Uh, I'll pass it. That's your privilege. Number six. I don't know, eh? I started to become convinced, you know, with the, the testimony of the people across the hall. Did they say something about an argument between the father and the, the boy at around seven o'clock that night? I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, I think it was eight o'clock, not seven. Eight o'clock, that's right. They heard the father hit the boy twice and then saw the boy run angrily out of the apartment. What does that prove? It doesn't prove anything. It's, it's part of the picture. I didn't say it proved anything. Anything else? No. How about you? <laughs> I don't know. 
Most of it's been said already. We can talk all day about this thing, but I think we're wasting our time. Look at the kid's record. At 15, he was in reform school. He stole a car. He was arrested for mugging. He was picked up for knife fighting. I think they said he stabbed somebody in the arm. This is a very fine boy. It's Ever good. since he was five years old, his father beat him regularly. He used his fists. So would I, a kid like that. Kids, today, they don't listen. I got a kid, when he was eight, saw him run away from a fight. I saw it. I was so ashamed. I told him right after, I was going to make a man out of him or I was going to break him into a thousand pieces trying. When he was 15, hit me in the face. He's a big kid, you know? I haven't seen him in three years. Rock kid. Try and give him everything. Anyways, let's get on with it. We're missing the point here. This boy, let's say he's a product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. We can't help that. We aren't here to go into reasons why kids from slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. They are. I know it's so do you. Kids from these neighborhoods are the breeding grounds for, for criminals. You said it right there. <laughs> I don't want any part of them. Believe me. I've lived in the slums my whole life. Oh, wait a second. I used to play in a playground filled with garbage. Maybe it still smells on me. Now hold on. There's nothing personal. There is something personal. We're not talking about you. No reason to be sensitive. Well, I can understand this sensitivity. Let's stop the bickering. We're wasting time. Number eight, it's your turn. Okay. I had a peculiar feeling about this trial. Somehow I felt the defense counsel never really conducted a thorough cross-examination. I mean, he was appointed by the court to defend the boy. He hardly seemed interested. Too many questions were left unasked. What about the ones that were asked? Let's take, for example, that cute little switch knife that the fine young man admitted purchasing. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's get in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again. We don't need to see it. We, we know what it looks like. Am I right? The jury has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Fine with me. This knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence, don't you agree? I do. The boy admits to going out of his house at 8 o'clock that night after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or punched. He went to a neighborhood store and he bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the next day after he admitted to selling the knife to the boy. It's a very unusual knife. The storekeeper said it was the only one of its kind that he had in stock. Why did the boy get it? As a gift for a friend of his? Am I right so far? Right. Absolutely right. <laughs> This lady knows what she's talking about. Listen up. Next, the boy says that on the way home, the knife must have fallen through a hole in his coat pocket that he never saw it again. Now there's a story. You know what actually happened. The boy took the knife home, stabbed his father with it, and he remembered to wipe off the fingerprints. Everyone connected to this case identifies this knife. Now, are you trying to tell me that somebody picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house, stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No. I'm saying it's possible the boy lost his knife and somebody else stabbed his father with a similar looking knife. It's possible. Take a look at that knife. It's a very strange knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life, and neither had the storekeeper who sold it to him. Are you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept it. I'm saying it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible. Hey, what are you doing? What is this? Who do you think you are? It's the same exact night. Quiet. Let's be quiet. Where did you get it? I got it last night at a little junk shop around the corner from the boys' apartment. It costs $2. That's a nice trick you pulled, but you know what? It proves absolutely zero. Maybe there's 10 knives just like it. Maybe there are. 
The boy lied and you know it. He may have lied. Do you think he lied? Oh, that's a stupid question. Sure he lied. Do you? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. Do you think he lied? Well, I, I don't know. Now wait a second. What are you, the kid's lawyer? There are still 11 of us who think he's guilty. You are alone. What do you think you're going to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, he'll be tried again and found guilty, sure as he's born. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We could be here all night. So what night? A man may die. Whose fault is that? You think maybe if we went over it again, maybe Look, did anyone that? force him to kill his father? I mean, how do you like that? Like, like someone oh, well, forced him to kill his father? Look, everyone, we can spend all night. Just a minute. Some of us have better things to do than sit around and sure stand around. a word in here. Why do we all have to talk at once? I think we should get on. It's your show. I've got a proposition to make. I'd like to call for a vote. I want you 11 to vote by secret ballot. I'll abstain. If there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't stand alone and will take in a guilty verdict right now. Okay, let's do it. Sounds fair enough to me. Any objections? Pass these along. Guilty. 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 Not guilty. Guilty. How do you like that? Who was it? I think we have a right to know. Excuse me, this is a secret ballot. We agree on this point, no? If the person wants it to remain a secret. We have no secrets in here. And I know who it was. What's the matter with you? You come in here and you vote guilty, and then some slick preacher starts bleeding all over the floor, and you change your vote. If that isn't the most sickening thing. Now hold it. Hold it? We're trying to put a man in the chair where he belongs, and all of a sudden we're going to listen to fairy tales? Now wait a minute. Please. I would like to say something here. I have always thought that all of its citizens were entitled to unpopular opinions in this country. That is the reason I came here. I wanted to have the right to disagree. In my country, I am ashamed to say that. <laughs> what do we have to listen to now? The whole history of your country? Yeah, let's stick to the subject. I want to ask you what made you change your vote. There's nothing he can tell you. He didn't change his vote. I did. Perhaps you'd like to know why. No, I wouldn't care to know why. <clears throat> the juror wants to talk. Thank you. This person chose to stand alone against us. That's a right given in this country. It's a great deal of courage to stand alone, even if you believe in something very strongly. The verdict was left up to us. It was a gamble for support, and I gave that support. I want to hear more. 
The vote is 10 to 2. That's fine. If the speech is over, hey, let's go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to get nasty. I apologize. Look, supposing you answer me this, if the kid didn't kill him, who did? As far as I'm aware, we're only supposed to determine whether or not the boy on trial is guilty. We're not concerned with any of his motives here. And guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That's an important thing to remember. Huh. Everybody's a lawyer. Perhaps you might like to tell me what your reasonable doubts are. This is not easy. So far, it's just a feeling I have. Just, just a feeling. Perhaps you wouldn't understand. <laughs> A feeling. What are we going to do? Spend the night talking about your feelings? What about the facts instead of mouthful? The old man heard the kid yell, I'm going to kill you. Then he heard a body fall. He saw the kid run out of the building. What more do you want? That's right. And let's not forget about the woman across the street. She looked into the open window and saw the boy stab his father. She saw it. Now, if that's not enough for you... It's not enough for me. How do you like that? It's like talking into a dead phone. The woman saw the killing through the, the windows of a moving elevated train. There were five cars, and she saw it through the last two. She remembers the most insignificant detail. What do you have to say about that? I don't know. It doesn't sound right to me. Well, why don't you think about it? Can I use this? Your turn. We might as well pass the time. What are you doing? This isn't a game. Who do you think you are? All right, let's take it easy. I've got a good mind of belt. Now please, I don't want any fights in here. The nerve. The absolute nerve. All right. Forget it. It doesn't mean anything. How about sitting down? This isn't a game. Who the hell says that? Take a look at this sketch. How long do you think it takes an elevated train going hop speed to pass a given point? What does that got to do with anything? How long? Guess. I wouldn't have the slides for What about you? I, I mean, maybe 10, 12 seconds. I'd say that's a fair guess. Anybody else? I would say perhaps uh, about 10 seconds. About 10 seconds? All right, say 10 seconds. What are you getting at? This. An elevated train passes a given point in 10 seconds. A given point is the window of the room in which the killing took place. You can practically reach out of that window and touch the L tracks, right? All right, so let me ask you this. Has anyone here ever lived right next to the L? I have. When your window is open and a train goes by, the noise is almost unbearable. You can't hear yourself think. Okay. <laughs> you can't hear yourself think. Would you get to the point? The old man testified that he heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. And then one second later, heard the body fall. That's the testimony, right? One second? Right. The woman said that she looked through the windows of the last two cars and saw the body fall. Right? The last two cars? What are you giving us here? An L train takes 10 seconds to pass a given point, or 2 seconds per car. That L train had to have been going by the old man's apartment for at least 6 seconds, maybe more, before the body fell, according to the woman. The f when the old man heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you, the front of that train had to be roaring past his nose. He couldn't have possibly have heard it. What do you mean? Sure he could have. Could he? Yeah, he... Well, I don't think he could have heard it. Maybe he didn't hear it. I mean, with the L noise? What? Are you are, are you saying the old man lied? I mean, it stands to reason. What reason would he have to lie? Attention, maybe. Uh, you keep coming up with these nice sayings. Why don't you send them to the newspaper? They pay good money for it. 
Why might the old man fly? You have a right to be heard. It's just that I looked at him for a very long time. The seam of his jacket was split under the arm. Did you notice that? This is an old man with a torn jacket, and he carries two canes. I think I know him better than anyone here. This is a quiet, frightened, insignificant man who's been nothing his whole life, never been recognized or had his name in the newspaper. No one knows him after 75 years, and that's a very sad thing. This is a man who needs to be recognized. He needs to be questioned, listened to, and quoted just once. This is very important. And you're trying to tell us that he lied about a thing like this just so that he could be important? No, no, he wouldn't really lie, but perhaps he made himself believe he heard those words and recognized the boy's face. I speak from experience. All right, is there anything else? Anyone want a cough drop? Come on, let's get on. I'll take one. Thank you. Now, I think we proved the old man couldn't have heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. But, supposing he really did hear this phrase, how many times has each of you used it? Probably hundreds. If you do that one more time, Junior, I'm going to murder you. Come on, Rocky, kill him! We say it all the time. That doesn't mean we're going to kill someone. The phrase was, I'm going to kill you. Trust me, if somebody says that, the way he said it, they mean it. And how they mean it. Let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy would have yelled it out so the whole neighborhood could hear him? I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Too bright? He's a common, ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't. <laughs> I would like to change my vote to not guilty. Oh, are you sure? Yes, I am. Vote is nine to three. Well, if that isn't the end, what are you basing it on? Stories this one made up? You ought to write for American Detective Monthly. It would make a fortune. Listen, the kid had a lawyer, didn't he? Why didn't his lawyer bring up any of these points? Lawyers can't think of everything. Oh, brother. You sit in here and pull stories out of thin air. Now we're supposed to believe that the old man didn't get up out of bed run to the door and see the kid beat it down the stairs 15 seconds after the killing. He's only saying he did to be important. Did the old man say he ran to the door? Uh, ran? Walked? What's the difference? He got there. I don't remember what he said, but uh, I don't think he could run. He said he went from his bedroom to the front door. That's enough, isn't it? Where was his bedroom again? Down the hall somewhere. I thought you remembered everything. Don't you remember that? No. As a matter of fact, I'd like to see the diagram of the apartment. Well, why don't we have them run the trial over, just so you can get everything straight? Please, if you don't mind. I heard you. Why are you the only one in the group who always wants to see exhibits? I want to see this one, too. I want to stop wasting time. We're going to start going, waiting through all that nonsense about where the body was found. We're not. We're going to see how an old man who's had two strokes in the last three years and walks with a pair of canes managed to get to his front door in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. He said 15. He was very positive about it. How can someone determine 15 from 20 seconds. How, how can he be positive of anything? He's an old man. He was confused half the time. Is this what you're looking for? That's right. Thank you. Ma'am? Do me a favor and wake me up when this is over. <laughs> All right, 
This is the apartment in which the killing took place. Now the old man's apartment is directly below it and exactly the same. Here are the L tracks, the bedroom, another bedroom, living room, kitchen, and bath. Here's the hall and the front door, and here are the stairs. Now, the old man was in bed in this room. He says he got up, went out into the hall, went down the hall to the front door, and opened it just in time to see the boy running down the stairs. Is that right? That's the story. All within 15 seconds after the body fell? Correct. The old man's bed by the window, it's 12 feet from the bed to the bedroom door. The hall is 43 feet, six inches. Now, the old man would have had to have gone out of bed, grabbed his canes, walked 12 feet to the bedroom door, opened it, walked another 43 feet down the hall, opened the front door, all within 15 seconds. Does that seem possible? Uh, you know it's possible. The old man could only walk very slowly. They had to help him into the victim's chair. You make it sound like it's a long distance, it's not. For an old man who uses canes, it's a long walk. What are you doing? I want to try this thing. Let's see how long it took me. I'm going to pace off 12 feet, the length of the bedroom. You're crazy. You can't recreate something like that. Perhaps if we could see it, this is an important point. I think we should see it. And I'd like to stop wasting time. Hand me a chair. Oh. All right, this chair will be the bedroom door. Now, how far would you say this from here to the door of this room? I'd say it's 20 feet. Just about. Let's say 20 feet. From here to the door in the back end is 40 feet. That's a little less than the length of the hall, wouldn't you say? A few feet, maybe. Look, look, look. this is absolutely insane. I mean, what makes you think you can recreate a thing like that? Do you mind if we try it? According to you, it'll only take 15 seconds. We can spare that. Uh, does anyone have a watch with a second hand? I have. Great. All right, when you want me to start, stamp your foot. That'll be the body falling. Tie me from there. Let's say the old man keeps his canes right next to his bed, right? Right. All right, I'm ready. Up. He was walking twice as fast as that! Uh, I think this didn't walk quickly than the old man walked in the cold room. Do you think I should go faster? I will. Stop. Right. How long? 31 seconds exactly. 31 seconds! It's my guess the old man was trying to get to his front door, heard someone run down the stairs, and assumed it was the boy. I think that's possible. Assumed? I've seen some dishonesty in my day, but this takes the cake. Say something, would you? You come in here, and you start telling stories about this poor kid, and some little old ladies start listening to you. But you know what? I'm not, and I'm sick of it. What is wrong with you people? This kid's a murderer. He's got to burn. We're going to let him slip through our fingers. Our fingers? Are you his executioner? I'm one of them. Perhaps you'd like to pull the switch. This kid, you better. I'm sorry for you. Don't start. What it must feel like to want to pull the switch? Shut up. You're a sadist. Shut up. You want this boy to die because you personally want it, not because of the fact. Shut up. Let go. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! You don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? <laughs> No, there's nothing wrong. You can take that back now. We're finished. What are you looking at? I don't 
don't see why we have to behave like children here. Nor do I. We have a responsibility here. This is a remarkable thing about democracy. That we are, oh, that is the word. They are notified. They are notified by mail to come to this place and decide on the guilt or innocence of a man we have not known before. We have nothing to gain or lose by our verdict. That is one of the reasons we are strong. We should not make this a personal thing. Well, we're still nowhere. Who's got an idea? I think we should try another vote. All right, let's do it. It's all right with me. Any objections? It should be an open vote. We should call things out so we know where we stand. That sounds fair. I'll call off your juror numbers. I vote guilty. Number two? Not guilty. Number three. Guilty. Number four. Guilty. Number five. Not guilty. Number six. Not guilty. Number seven. Guilty. Number eight. Not guilty. Number nine. Not guilty. Number ten. Guilty. Number eleven. Not guilty. Number 12. Guilty. Six to six. I'll tell you something. The crime is being committed right in this room. The vote is six to six. Tell you what, I'm going to walk into courtroom right now and declare a hung jury. There's no reason to keep going on with this. I go for that too. Let's take it to the judge and let the kid take his chances with 12 other people. You still don't think there's room for reasonable doubt? No. I don't. Oh, I beg your pardon, but perhaps you don't understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you mean I don't understand it? Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? How do you like this? He comes over here running for his life, and before he can take a big breath, he's telling us how to run the show? The arrogance. No one was asking you where you came from. I was born right here. Or your father. Maybe we should take some tips from people who come running here. Maybe they know something we don't. We're not so perfect. Please, I am used to this. It's all right. Thank you. No, it's not all right. Okay, okay. I apologize. Is that what you want? That is what I want. Let's stop all the arguing. Who's got something constructive to say? Well, something's been bothering me a little. This whole business about the stab wound and how it was made, the downward angle of it, you know? We're not going to start going over that again, are we? They went over and over it in court. I know they did, but I don't go along with it. The boy is five feet eight inches tall. His father was six, too. That's a difference of six inches. It's a very awkward thing to step down into the chest of someone who's half a foot taller than you are. You're obviously not going to be satisfied until you see this demonstrated. So, I'm going to give you a little demonstration. Somebody stand up. <laughs> Now watch carefully, I don't want to have to do this twice. So is that six inches? That's more than six inches. Let it be more. Oh, it's not funny. What's the <laughs> matter with you? It's okay. No one's hurt, are they? No. Nobody's hurt. Well, there you have it. That's the angle. Down and in. That's how I would stab somebody that was six inches taller than me. That's the angle. Down and in, I guess there's no argument. Did you ever stab 
stab someone? Of course not. Did you? No, come on, don't be silly. Did you? No. Where do you get all your knowledge about where or how it's done? It's common sense. Have you ever seen someone stabbed? No. Okay. Let me ask a question. The boy was an experienced knife fighter, right? He was even sent to reform school for stabbing someone. That's right. Okay. Now watch this. Doesn't that seem like an awkward way to handle a knife? What are you asking me for? Oh, oh hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Give me that. Have you ever seen a knife fight? Yes. In the movies? In my backyard. On my stoop in the vacant parking lot across the street. Too many of them. Switch knives came with the neighborhood I lived in. It's kind of funny, I didn't think about it before. I guess you try to forget those kind of things. There's no way he made this. He's no, there's no way he made this stab wound. Don't stab upwards. You stab, you stab underhanded. So the boy couldn't have made the kind of wound that killed his father? Not if he's an experienced knife fighter. I don't believe it. Neither do I. You're giving us a bunch of mumbo jumbo. What do you think about it? Horrible. I don't know. What about you? Listen, I'll tell you something. I'm a little sick of this whole thing already. We're getting nowhere fast. Let's break it up and go home. I'm changing my vote to not guilty. You're what? You heard me. I've had enough. That's no answer. I believe you're right. This is not an answer. What kind of a person are you? You have sat here and voted guilty with everyone else because you have some theater tickets burning a hole in your pocket. And now you have changed your vote for the very same reason. You do not have the right to play with a man's life like this. This is a terrible and ugly thing to do. Now wait a minute. You can't talk like that to me. I can't talk to you like that. If you think the man is not guilty, do it because you think the man is not guilty. If you think he is guilty, then vote that way. Or don't you have the guts to do what you think is right? Okay, now you listen! Guilty or not guilty? I told you not guilty. Fine! I don't have to! You have to! Say it! Fine! I don't think he's guilty. I want another vote. Another vote's been called for. I guess the closest way would be a show of hands. All those in favor of not guilty, raise your hands. None. All those voting guilty, raise your hands. Three. The vote is nine to three in favor of acquittal. Huh. I don't understand you people. How can you believe this kid is innocent? Look, you know how those people lie. I don't have to tell you that. They don't know what the truth is, and they don't need any good reason to kill someone either. They get drunk, then bang, someone's lying in the gutter. Oh, nobody's blaming them. That's just the way they are. You know what I mean? Violent. Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us. Where are you going? These people are drinking and fighting all the time. And if somebody gets killed, so somebody gets killed. They don't care. Oh, sure, there are some good things about them, and I'd be the first to say that. I've even, I've even known a few decent ones, but, but that is the exception. Most of them, it's like, it's like they have no feelings. They can do anything. What's going on here? 
I'm speaking my piece and you listen to me. They're no good. There is not one of them who is any good. Oh, we better watch out. Take it from me, this kid on trial. Well, don't you know about them? Listen to me. What are you doing? I'm trying to tell you something. I've had enough. If you open your mouth again, I'm going to knock you out. But I was only trying to tell them. I still believe the boy is guilty. I'll tell you why. To me, the most damning evidence came from the woman across the street who actually saw the murder happen. You're right. Absolutely right. <coughs> All right, let's go over her testimony. What exactly did she say? I believe I can recall it accurately. She went to bed at around 11 o'clock. Her bed was next to the open window, and while lying down, she could see directly into the window across the street. She tossed and turned for about an hour, unable to fall asleep. Finally, she turned over, and as she looked at around 10, 10, 12, 10, she saw the boy stab the saw. To me, this is unshakable testimony. That's the most important evidence right there. Frankly, I, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. What do you think of it? Well, maybe. There's so much evidence to sift. I just Maybe? That's the whole case. That was my thinking. What time is it? It's, uh, ten minutes to six. It's late. You don't suppose they'd let us go home and finish it in the morning? I've got a kid with mumps. Not a chance. Pardon me. Can't you see the clock without your glasses? Not clearly. Why? <laughs> Look, this might be a dumb thought, but... What do you do when you wake up at night and you want to know what time it is? What do you mean? I put on my glasses and look at the clock. So you don't wear your glasses to bed? Of course not. No one wears eyeglasses to bed. What's all this for? I was thinking that this woman that testified she saw the killing, she wears eyeglasses. So does my grandmother, so what? Your grandmother's a murder witness. Look, stop me if I'm wrong, but she wouldn't wear her eyeglasses to bed now, would she? Wait a minute. Did the woman wear glasses at all? I don't remember. Of course she did! The woman wore bifocals! I remember this very clearly. They looked quite strong. And that's right, bifocals, and she never took them off. She did wear glasses. Funny, I never thought of it. Listen, she wasn't wearing her glasses to bed, that's for sure. She testified that in the midst of her tossing and turning, she casually looked out the window. The murder was taking place as she looked out, and the lights went off a split second later. She couldn't have had time to put on her glasses. How do we know what she saw? Maybe she's farsighted. How, how can we know all these things? Does anyone still believe there's not reasonable doubt? I got nothing more to say. I still think the kid is guilty. Does anyone else? No, I can think. You're alone. I don't care if I'm alone or not. I'm titled, I'm titled on my opinion. Do you have a right to it? I said, I think the kid is guilty. What more do you want me to say? Your arguments. I gave you my arguments. We are not convinced. We'd like to hear them again. We have time. Come on. You, it, it, you, you were the one with all the arguments. Don't turn now. There's gonna be a murderer walking the streets. Stick with me. I'm sorry. There's a reasonable doubt in my mind. They're waiting. 
I'm not going to be intimidated. It's going to be a hung jury. That's it. There's nothing we can do about that except hope some night, maybe a few months from now, you finally get some sleep. You're alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stay up alone. 